You know, considering the Great Barrier Reef is just a few kilometres away, probably should consider a holiday up here, but for some reason, I always get drawn into working because this clinic delivers some of the most interesting, most amazing cases I ever see. Chris is on a visit to North Queensland, and not for the first time, he's had a call to see if he can lend a hand at the Marlin Coast Veterinary Hospital. <laughs> Hello again. Hi, Chris. Nice to have you back. Good to be back. Can't wait to see what you got for me. Chris's first patient is already waiting. Albino rat Marcus and his owner Tia. This is my buddy Marcus. He came to me about two and a half years ago and he was a rescue animal, so he was someone else's unwanted pet. And the moment I laid my eyes on him, it was love at first sight. And we've been like this ever since. So. Marcus is two and a half, which is considered old for a rat, and has been having trouble breathing. So he's been wheezing a little bit and also he's been having like snotty kind of substance coming from his nose and that can be a problem especially here in Cairns where the humidity gets really high. Hi there. Hello. How are you? I'm Chris. See ya. Nice to meet you. Who's this in here? This is my friend Marcus. Little Marcus. Yeah, he's an albino rat. Hello buddy. Alright, do you want to come through then? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Normally I associate Cairns with big dogs, with the occasional cat and big reptiles like snakes and crocodiles, you don't normally expect to see rats. So what's the reason that Marcus is in here? Um, I'm very worried about his um, respiratory problems. He seems to be having a little bit of wheezing from his lungs. And also there's been a fair bit of um, porphyry coming from his nose. So he's just, he's had weeping coming out of his yes. eyes and out yeah. of his nose. If rats have a weakness, it's probably their breathing. They are renowned for developing a respiratory illness that causes them to have a lot of difficulty getting air in and getting air out. But what's interesting is that you know, he, he has moved about 20 centimetres altogether, mm -hmm. but it looks like he, he's been for a run. Yeah. His eyes are, are shut quite a bit too. So he, he just looks a bit run down. Well, let's have a listen to his chest. Could I get you to yeah. hold him there for me? Look, I can certainly hear more noise coming from his chest than I should. So rather than the air coming in and out very smoothly, it, it comes in and out with, with, with more sound. So it's, it's, it sounds rougher. And that's usually because there's a build up of something in the airway, so the flow of the air is partially blocked. Mm. When I'm listening to Marcus's chest, I'm not hearing what I want to hear. When you hear good, healthy lungs, it's like a calm breeze just flowing in and out. But in his case, it's like a drinking straw at the bottom of a can of drink. There's a lot of turbulence and the air is being forced through narrow airways that have little blockages in there. So the big challenge at the moment is just working out exactly what has caused it. Mm. And obviously how we can treat this issue because my fear is that if we don't do anything, given Marx's age and condition at the moment, then this problem could get worse and could get worse a lot more quickly than, than we want. Oh! Hey, settle down, buddy. It's alligator breeding season at the Australian Reptile Park and the lagoon's residents are in a feisty mood. Hello. I've got a bit of a surprise for the reptile keepers today. Halftail, this female alligator, has laid her eggs last night. And she's not just any female. She's small, but she's the crankiest female in the lagoon. I'm going to have to go and break the news to the keepers that we've got to get some eggs out of that nest. But first, we've got to get past her. General Manager Tim Faulkner has gathered a crack team to tackle one of the park's most dangerous jobs. 
So let's just hold up here a minute and just have a talk about what we're going to do. So it's that time of year, gator nest raids. Just watch, you've got a gator coming up here. <laughs> <laughs> Eggs are hungry. <laughs> we've only walked 10 metres into the lagoon and we've already got a female hassling us. This could get a bit interesting. Well, it's that time of year, so we've got hungry gators and we've got nesting gators. So today we've got half tail. Has anyone not raided half tail's nest before? No, I don't think I have. She's nuts. She's not the biggest gator in the lagoon, but she'll give you a good two to three metre lunge. So just be prepared for that, because we're working in a pretty confined space today. Bill, you and I rope. Yeah. Mike, Renee on the back. Zach and Bill on the water. Keep those gators away. I'll get in and get some eggs. Hopefully it's a smooth process. There are two reasons that we need to rescue the eggs. Firstly, it's much hotter here than where gators live in the States. We leave the eggs in the nest, they overheat and die. Secondly, Gators are cannibals. There's 40 in there. If the little one's hatched, they'll eat them. OK, so she's already up on that nest, guys. So uh, we haven't got a lot of room to work here. I think to start with, Mike, Zach, Renee, just head down, guard that water. Bill and I'll go up, just try and secure those jaws, and then we'll all be a little bit happier. Fair to say, we get a buzz out of working with gators. But it's important that we have a brief and that everyone just remembers their roles and goals because that's what saves your buddy's life and that's what stops Halftail from getting hurt. OK, are we ready to rock and roll, guys? Yep. You want to turn her? Just, um, uh, Bill. You stop her. I am. Halftail's only objective is to defend the nest. Now, in the wild, she'd have things like feral pigs trying to raid it, monitor lizards getting in, other gators. Now, her job is to keep us away. You got it? Close. No. Watch, there's a big lunge coming here. Something's going on inside those lungs mm. to make breathing very difficult for him. The worry I've got is that he's not a young rat, mm. and for him, breathing is already becoming harder just with older age. At the Marlin Coast Veterinary Hospital, Chris's first patient is Marcus, the albino rat, who's having respiratory problems. My feeling is we're either facing a bacterial pneumonia or, or a mycoplasma mm. pneumonia which is a little organism that's not really like a bacteria and not really like a virus, it's kind of in between. I knew he had a little bit of wheezing happening, but I wasn't expecting it to be as big of a health problem as Dr Chris explained that it was. That definitely hit me hard when Dr Chris said that he is quite sick. What can we do for him? So we can treat that with antibiotics, so with some medicine, which, which will help. But you can treat all those bugs in the chest, but unless you help the body to get them out mm. and to get rid of that mucus and to make breathing easier, then you may not actually even see any benefit. The simple fact is that he needs help to get that mucus out of his chest. If it just stays there, his breathing will stay the same. The way I'm gonna get the mucus out of his chest, it may raise some eyebrows. I think we should nebulize him. So what we're going to do is allow him to breathe in a mix of saline, but also a tiny little bit of antibacterial disinfectant. Oh, that sounds amazing. So when that happens, the mucus absorbs that fluid, becomes a little bit bigger, but also a lot more moist. And that way he can actually cough it up and bring it up himself. Fantastic. Sounds really good, Doctor. Yeah. I have to say that I was fearing for the worst, of course. So treatment-wise, I'll anything for him. I would do absolutely anything for him. He's part of our family. Sounds good. Off you go, darling boy. Mum, we'll see you soon. There you go. Close. Nah. Watch, there's a big lunge coming here. We're all right. At the Australian Reptile Park, Tim and his team are trying to restrain a super aggressive female alligator. Got it. Oh, grab that in my thumb. 
Okay. Gators are really different to a saltwater croc. If this was a saltwater crocodile yard, we couldn't be in here. But what gators lack in aggression, they make up for in jaw strength. One of the strongest jaws on Earth. Not too far forward, let's let her walk back a little bit. You got half tail, defending that nest. If she bites one of us, she's gonna bite with real intent and not let go. Okay. Whoa. No other gator like that. No, no way. She's like a croc. Okay. You guys feeling good? One. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You just watch those hands in her mouth, mate. But oh, one, two, three. That's it, well done. Can you tell us when you're right? Yeah. Good. Okay, let's get that. Bill, I'm gonna hold rope. Yep. You wanna put some tape on there? Yep. Just watch his bit. Ooh, that... his bit go. That's good. Okay, Bill, you wanna shut him? Now it's time to tape the mouth. You got one of the strongest jaws on earth. If a limb goes in it, it's not coming back out. Once the mouth's shut, it's a little bit safer. Yep. All right. Good. Good stuff. Half tail by far has more energy and fire than any female in the lagoon. But she's not the biggest, she's just got spirit. Everyone right? Yeah, mate. Boy, Timmy, we've got gators coming up here. Big, big gator. Boy, big boy. Keep him back, mate. Zachy, you watch that one. Come on, mate. He'd have you for breakfast, Mike. Everything happens really fast, and you have to keep moving. The gators in the water think it's feed time, and they're already coming up. Thankfully, Bill's there, and he's just holding them off. We good? Hold up, hold no, up. Hold up. Hey, Shannon. Hey, hey Chris. Um, I want to nebulise little Marcus here. OK. You don't have little rat masks, I'm guessing. Probably not small enough for him, no. Do you have like a box, even like a little storage container? Yep, yep, I'll okay. find something for us, nice. yep. Thank you. In North Queensland, Chris is trying to help a pet rat that's struggling to breathe. Nebulising certainly makes sense to me, but how are we going to get that fluid into his chest and have it work its magic? Well, I've got some ideas. OK, so we've got our mask, which is the box. We just need our nebulizer and our liquid. The whole goal here is to put moist, sterile, antibacterial air into Marcus's lungs. Now I've got my storage box, all I need to do is make up my magic solution. Okay, so we'll take two mils of this. The solution I'm using is one part antibacterial liquid, 250 parts saline. Add that together. Mix them together and find a way to get them into his lungs and all of a sudden, we're nebulizing. Pop it in. I think this is going to work. So, you create a bit of a seal. And then, if we put this in here, wedge that through there. Okay. And all of a sudden, Marcus, you've got your own personal steam room. Okay, let's start. All right. So straight away, we're already starting to see some water vapour appear in the tube, find its way into the box, which is perfect. The challenge is now trying to find a white rat in amongst white fog. It's a total white out there now, but importantly, he's breathing comfortably and he's getting that medicine right where he needs it. You know, anyone that's been into a steam room knows when you come out, your chest feels kind of clear, and that's all because that water vapour is helping to, to loosen everything up and, and really open up your airways, and hopefully that's exactly what's happening with Marcus right now. The only giveaway that he's still in there is the fact his little tail is just sneaking at the side here. Oh, there it is. But the rest of him disappeared. It sounds strange to say this, but my hope is when Marcus comes out of this box, he's actually going to be coughing and spluttering. The whole idea there is that his own mechanisms are kicking into action. They're actually removing that buildup of mucus and his airways have already expanded. Out in reception, owner Tia is anxiously waiting for news of her beloved pet. Being apart from him is indeed very hard. So hopefully Marcus is feeling much better after the treatment and I'm looking forward to getting him home. All right, that is it. So Marcus, you in there? Mm -hmm. Hey, hi little buddy. 
As I open the lid, a big waft of steam escapes, but through that mist, I see two big red beady eyes staring right back at me. And that's a good start. Hey, Marcus. What happened, little buddy? Okay. So I can really hear that his, his breathing certainly does sound even more moist than it did before, but that, that's, that is actually a good thing. That was the whole idea of the process, was to try to, if you like, lubricate his airways, make sure that mucus uh, was able to, to really slide back out. You just need one more thing. A little shot of antibiotics. Sorry, little buddy. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, oh there we go. There you go, little man. Well done, huh? You are good, aren't you? Well done. Yeah. Those eyes of yours are a lot wider than they were before. It's got to be a good sign, isn't it? You're more active, aren't you? He seems a lot happier now. Yeah. But you're not happy with the hair? Well, how do you do it? Oh, you brush it forward. While I'm worried about Marcus's health, he seems more concerned about something else. His hairstyle. He's just making some adjustments. You look good. Should we go back to Mum? Yeah? In a short period of time, we've managed to turn around what could have been quite a serious health issue for Marcus. And now, he's free to go back home and live what should hopefully be a long and happy life with Tia. Look who I have here. Oh, my boy. My <laughs> little boy. He's all steam clean, too. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Mm. Oh, he looks beautiful. Yeah, those eyes of his are a lot brighter, mm. too. Given how much Tia clearly cares for Marcus, I know she's going to be a hard marker. But thankfully, the moment they're back together, she seems thrilled. And Marcus, going on those big red eyes, looks equally as happy. So he's been a little bit spluttery, which, which is good. Uh -huh. Means he's starting to, to clear out some of that build up. Mm -hmm. But importantly, he's really active, he's really busy. Oh, good. Yeah, he's looking much better. Yeah, so Wonderful. it's telling us he's getting a lot more oxygen into his body. Mm. There's no doubt that Marcus is a unique patient and he's had a unique treatment today, but his relationship with Tia is no different to any other pet. And now, thankfully, both of them can breathe a lot easier. There you go. All Perfect. right, he's all yours. Thank okay, you take so care. much. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Just hold up, guys. Google is just coming in through the back here. OK, we've got a second male. He'll give us a bit of curry. Yep, hold him back. At the Australian Reptile Park's Alligator Lagoon, the annual nest raid is being interrupted by some ferocious intruders. Feeling a little vulnerable here, Tim. You are vulnerable, mate, but you've got good boys on it. OK, so I'm going to head in and get these eggs and get it over and done with, hey? Righto. We've caught Halftail. She's under control. The gators are being held back at the water. My job now is to get the eggs. With these gator nests, I mean, this is an impressive nest. It's massive. And all this vegetation's built up by Halftail. And as it decomposes, it creates the heat that incubates the eggs. So my guess is that the eggs are there. And I hope they're there, because this is a big nest to have to search through. Bill, I'm digging and digging. It's a massive nest. I uh, got them. Found the bunch. And a good looking clutch, perfect. And the thing is, with reptile eggs, their membrane attaches to the shell. So if you roll the egg, you essentially turn the baby upside down, you can kill it. Uh, let's say a chicken egg, uh, it has a floating membrane, so the, the chickens roll their eggs for incubation, but critically, with gator eggs, a bit of dirt goes in the bottom, and each precious little egg comes out exactly like it was. How are we going down the water there, boys? Yeah, we've still got a couple trying to come up, but um, we're holding them off pretty well. The big male that's coming up at us is Googly Eye, which is the biggest alligator in the lagoon. He's four metres and almost half a ton in weight, and he's got a full-on attitude to go with it. Renee, you looking after Mike? Yep. Hold tight, mate. Won't be long, Mike. Are you all right? Yeah, mate. We're up to 40. Nice. Now, the eggs, they're not like a lot of reptile eggs that are soft and rubbery. They're really porcelain-like. The best part about this clutch is they're fertile. We can tell that because of that white band across the top. If they're infertile, you won't see that. While Tim is busy collecting the eggs, keepers Mike and Renee are struggling to hold the mother alligator. <laughs> It's a really tough gig on the back of a gator. So Mike and Renee have to be able to manage her when she starts to squirm. If she went back in the water with the tape around her mouth, 
That's a nightmare. So it's a tough position to be in, but they're doing a great job. Yeah, I'm going to give you a hand for a sec, mate. That I doesn't feel... help when you get a cramp in your leg. I feel a little bit more comfy if we brought you this way. Can you work with us, Mike? Yeah. One, two, three. Again, one, two, three. Yeah. yeah. Mike is on the back of a half tail. He's got a cramp in his leg. It happens because it's a really awkward position, but he just has to get through it. But uh, total count, 50. Oh, no, I've spotted one more. Two more. 52. One off the record. Oh, yeah, man, that's a big clutch. Once Tim has filled the chamber back in, Halftail won't know the clutch has been moved. But importantly, her precious eggs will now be safe. All right. That's full. She won't know the difference. One go to let go, and we're finished. At the Marlin Coast Veterinary Hospital, reptile keeper Kirsty is bringing in a prized exhibit. So today we've got one of our Fijian crested iguanas here from Cairns Tropical Zoo. Uh, he's not looking as bright and perky as he normally does, so uh, I'm just bringing him down to get a bit of a check up and see what's going on. How are you going? Hey. How are you? I'm Chris. Good. Christy, how nice are you? Nice to meet you, Christy. Um, have I seen him before? I think you might have, yeah. He looks very familiar. A different, slightly different colour, but yep. he does that. He um, does indeed. Go on through. I don't see too many Fijian crested iguanas. So when I see this little guy, I'm thinking, hang on. Now, when you're one of the rarest animals in the world, you don't forget a face. No. It's Aku, isn't it? Yep, definitely yep. Aku. Wow. Hello, buddy. Wow. Six months ago, Aku was brought to Chris after the endangered lizard's keeper became concerned about his health. His appetite's gone down and he just hasn't been himself lately. Hasn't been eating as much as he normally would and yeah. Yeah, nowhere near as active as normal. An X-ray revealed an enormous bladder stone was the cause of Aku's trouble. Wow, that's not what I expected. Chris's only choice was to remove it surgically. How's he doing at the moment? Obviously, you're back for a reason. Yeah, he's not so good at the moment. Um, he was doing fantastic after the last surgery, but he's um, just in the last week or so dropped a lot of condition. It's a little bit flat, a little bit darker in colour, which usually means something's not quite right. Yeah, I know they've got that ability to change their colour, but he's certainly a lot darker. Mm, yeah, you know, he's, he's not a happy lizard at the moment. No. He definitely looks skinnier to me. We're quite concerned about him. Aku's been with us for quite a long time now. He's been there the entire time I've been there. He's one of the first Fijian Cresteds I worked with. So he is, um, you know, one of our senior lizards at the zoo. So uh, he's a favourite. He's very friendly. He often comes out for photo shoots and um, he's great for the public to have a pat and have a hold and get up close with them. So it's, um, we're all quite concerned about his welfare. So is he eating at the moment? Not really, no. He's just sitting on the bottom of the cage, head down, not happy. So not really into his food, a bit more lethargic? Definitely more lethargic, yeah. yeah. All right. Probably the, the first thing I would do is just get a weight yep. for him. He was 350 grams last time he was in. Yep. Okay, 245. That's a considerable drop. Yeah. yeah. So he's essentially lost almost a third of his weight. Mm, it's a lot. To lose a third of your body weight over just a few months, that's a big change and a big cause for concern. Okay, tape is off, knife away. Mike, are your legs working? Just hold up, gator coming in. At the Australian Reptile Park, the gator nest raid has produced a massive clutch of 52 eggs, but the danger level is still high. The plan is, Billy will hold the jaws of the gator shut, Renee comes off, one, two, three, I pull Mike off. Sounds simple. Okay, Nay, no, off for a sec. And Bill's lifeline. Ready for Mike? One, two, three. Oh. You're not hit by the Bill. Just watch out there. <laughs> You're all right. Yeah. We sustain a headbutt. He split me a bit. That's a new one. <laughs> when I've grabbed Mike, I might have pulled back a little bit too hard because his head's ripped up, whacked Billy in the mouth, we've got a gator in the middle, and you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> Give us, a, give us a look at your lip. You're on report. <laughs> hey, we're out here catching gators and Mike's throwing headbutts. Now, nah, good job, guys. That was a hard one to do. Well done, especially the half tail. Well, she looks happy, eh? Hey? Okay, I'll get these eggs up. So 
So the team's job is done. For me now, I've got to get the eggs up to the incubating room and set them up where they'll sit for the next two months. There you go, little guys. Now this is an incubating container. Now, we have to artificially simulate what it's like in an alligator's nest. And we're reptile parks. So we've got lots of reptiles, lots of eggs. This whole room is one giant incubator, between 31 to 32 degrees. All I've got to do now is get the eggs from here into here. Just got to keep each egg up almost exactly as it sits. I packed a heap of dirt between the eggs so that when we carry them, they don't rock and roll too much. They just stay in that position. It is warm in here. I'm sweating. And I've had to use two containers. I mean, 52, that's a big clutch. And that there is our last little precious egg. And now I've just got to put them on the shelf, wait 60 days, and we have little alligators chirping one morning. Well, good luck. I'll see you little blokes in 60 days. So we know he's lost a lot of weight. Yeah. I guess the, the first thing we should check is, is whether we can feel a similar problem to what he had last time. Yep. Whether there's a, another bladder stone there. At the Marlin Coast Veterinary Hospital, Chris is examining a familiar old patient, Aku, the Fijian crested iguana. Looking at Aku's face, it's clear that me feeling around his belly, it's a major inconvenience for him, but obviously it has to be done. The key here is identifying if he's had a recurrence, a return of that bloodstone issue. Oh, I can't really feel anything in there that's suspicious. Well, that's a good start. Yeah. That's definitely a good sign that it's not a new bladder stone. That was a real issue last time. Yeah, look, his heart rate's slow, which would certainly fit in with him being just a little flat. Yeah. Breathing's OK. Mm -hmm. Not brilliant, but OK. Let's just have a look at his hydration as well. Let's pinch the skin there. Let's see what happens. Yeah, his skin certainly is tenting. Yeah. I would say he's dehydrated. Yeah. The food that iguanas eat is often quite high in water and it's where a lot of their hydration comes from. So for Aku to be looking so dehydrated, it almost makes sense because without the food, he's not getting the water. We know he's dehydrated, we know he's underweight, we know he's lethargic, we know he, his general metabolism is, is slower than it should be. Yeah. I think the best thing to do would be to give him an x-ray. Yep. And just see exactly what's happening internally and check that there's not a little bladder stone developing or he doesn't have some sort of internal problem that, that we're not seeing from this physical examination. Yep. Hey Lisa. Hi. Look what I got. Oh my goodness. Tiny puppy. It's yours? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi, what's your name? It's Ponyo. Ponyo. At Sash, Hi. vet nurse Steph has surprised Lisa with a visit from her new five-month-old pug. Hey, you're such a cutie pug. You're such a cutie. Have you just come to visit us at work? Yeah, could you vet check him, please? Oh, you just re just got him. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness, you're a real newbie. Hey. It's really important that when you get a new pet, whether they're young or old, that they have a vet check. I need to make sure that everything's healthy from this little guy, even though he looks bright and energetic. My goodness, well, you get an A-plus for cuteness, that is for sure. <laughs> All right, now you're going to sit still so I can actually check you out. I'm examining him from top to tail, checking his head, his heart, his tummy, making sure that he's healthy. Ears look good. Has he had any issues at home? No, no, no issues. Oh my <laughs> goodness, just issues of craziness. Yeah. Huh? Is that it? He's my first dog out of home. He is a handful. <laughs> Having a dog is a handful. Um, I have two cats, so they get along all right together, as long as he doesn't annoy them too much. 
cutie pie. I need to look at this squashed face. I need to look at this squashed face that we love. All right. His nostrils are a little bit narrow. Is he pretty snorty? Yeah. Yeah. While Ponyo's short nose and squashed face looks adorable, he actually has quite narrow nostrils. Now, that's going to prevent him from getting enough air into his body, and as he gets older, that can lead to breathing problems. Yeah, I can hear him snorting in there. Yes. Okay, we might need to fix those nostrils down the track. I'm glad I've picked this up early because Ponyo is going to have surgery in the near future to be desexed, and at the same time, it's a good idea that Steph has his nostrils widened so that he'll be able to breathe better and hopefully prevent any breathing issues later in life. Well, my friend, apart from your narrow little nostrils and your excess manhood back there, you look pretty good. You look pretty good. Hey? It was what I expected. Um, all pugs seem to have quite small nostrils and I would rather get it fixed now than at a later age and see him struggling to breathe. Otherwise, Lisa told me he's all fine and he's ready to go home. All right, buddy. So, in the near future, have him desexed, have them operate on his nose as well, and then that's going to be much better for you, hey, buddy? It is. All right. I always love it when staff members get new pets because they become part of our family too. And for Steph, this is her first dog and I'm so excited for her to enjoy the next many years to come. Thank you for checking him over. No problem. My pleasure. I'm always happy for a checkup and some free cuddles, eh? Cutie pie. You're a cutie pie. So this is Aku, mm -hmm. he needs an x-ray. So I'm just checking whether he's had a recurrence of a bladder stone problem. Yep. Or whether there's something else going on. At the Marlin Coast Veterinary Hospital, Chris is treating a familiar old face. It's probably no surprise that I don't see too many Fijian crested iguanas. So to have a second look at Aku, it's a bit of a pleasure. So I need to maybe use that box. Mm -hmm and just make a little barricade so I can actually get a good shot. Yeah, sure. Can you give me a box cutter? Yeah, sure thing. For such an unusual patient, Chris needs to make some unconventional adaptations to the X-ray table. The best way to keep a lizard or an iguana still is to make them feel like there's nowhere else to go. A four-sided box without a base is the best way to do it. It's not my finest surgical work. Uh, okay. You've had one of these before, haven't you? This will essentially be a full body shot that's really focused on the abdomen. That's where I'm most concerned we may see something abnormal. X-ray. Given the fact Aku's lost almost a third of his body weight in just a few months, I'd expect the X-rays to look dramatic. Wanna watch? The thing that I'm really checking for here is, first of all, the, the bone density, really how white the bones are, which is normal. And then immediately my attention gets drawn here. There's a collection of little white dots here. Now that could be the very start of another bladder stone, but his bladder shouldn't be that far forward. So what you sometimes find with iguanas is they're, they're quite experimental when it comes to, to their digestion. And in this situation, I'd say that Aku has picked up little bits of grit, tiny little stones and, and swallowed them. And they're actually sitting in his intestine there. It's actually normal. That, that would not be causing him any sort of problem whatsoever. So across the whole x-ray, there's nothing there that shouldn't be there. So I can say that when it comes to his internal health, he's actually looking okay. What I'm convinced we're looking at here is a real combination of factors. Aku, being a cold-blooded iguana, hasn't really found a way to get his metabolism kick-started after the colder months. Add to that the fact that he's old, and really, he's just struggling to get his whole system firing. Christy, you ready? Chris can now right. pass on the good news to Aku's keeper, Christy. Here's your boy. And on the x-rays, what we found wasn't actually too much. Okay, that's so good. That's good news. The x-rays 
showed him to be quite normal. Yep, great. But I just feel like his whole metabolic rate, his whole body system hasn't really been firing. Yep. And so the idea is to try to give him a bit of a boost. I were a little bit nervous waiting to see what was going to happen, whether these uh, the stones were back, whether there was something more sinister going on in there. Uh, but luckily it looks like it's all turned out quite well. It just seems to be age related, which is fantastic. That's something we can manage and, and get this little guy back on track. So we'll start with the fluids. First up, Aku needs some fluids. This is saline and the whole goal here is simply to rehydrate him. This one is his antibiotics. As a bit of extra insurance to really help his immune system along, I'm also going to give him a shot of antibiotics. So he's not going to get all of this. Mm -hmm. Just going to get 0.3. The best treatment for Aku, considering his condition, is actually vitamins. Vitamins in reptiles are incredibly successful at kick-starting the metabolism, getting them interested in food again, and really lifting up their heart rate and getting them up and going. Yep. So we're giving those B vitamins there. Last one. So this one's vitamin A, D, E, and C. All right, and after that, I think we can pretty safely say he's fully covered. Fantastic. All right, so it'll take a few days, but I, yep. I would hope that you'll start to see a bit of a boost. Yep. It's kind of just a bit of a reality check for him that yeah. he's not as young as he used to be and probably not as young as he thinks he is. Definitely. And by just helping his own body system along to, to get moving again, then I think you'll find that the appetite should return and he should really start to, to show a bit more strength and a bit more fight. Sounds good. Hopefully it works. Hopefully this little guy will be up and uh, nice and perky again and be back out interacting with all the customers and guests at the zoo. Uh, he is one of our little favourites. He's very bright, he's very colourful. Everyone likes to uh, come up, give him a little pat and maybe even feed him a hibiscus flower. So hopefully he'll be back out there uh, in no time. It's nice to see it, but just not as often. I'm sure in the back of Christy's mind, when she came in here this morning, she would have thought, oh no, it's all happening again. Aku is gonna need another major operation. Thankfully, that hasn't been the case. All right, I think he wants to leave. Fantastic, thank you for <laughs> your help. He's heard enough. <laughs> He's had enough, awesome. All right, see you later. Christy. Thanks for that. Take care. Bye-bye. It's been nine weeks since our little gator eggs were laid. Any day now, they're due to hatch. It could be today. Listen to that. At the Australian Reptile Park, it's an exciting day. Here we go. Look at that. Listen to that. That's not something you want to hear in the wild. That means mum's coming. I'm your mum for today. Come on, I'll help you out. You've all hatched well. And those little cries for help, they call out to mum. And when mum hears that, she would go up to the nest, dig it up, she picks up the baby so gently in her mouth, and she carries them down to the water. And that's exactly what I'm doing, taking them from the nest into some water. They have a rinse off, get rid of all the yuck from inside the egg, and now I'm going to take them to their new home. Hello, little fella. You're tiny and you're white. Look how small he is. You can be Harry, Harry the hatchling. You're gonna need a bit of extra care, hey, mate. Look how white he is. And my guess would be if he was in the wild, he'd be the first one to get eaten. He's a very vulnerable little fella, but luckily, we can look after him. Hey, mate, it's your lucky day. In you go. Look at you guys, ready to go. Here's your new home. You ready to go in? The baby gators will be in, in this little enclosure for about a year. And after a year, they'll maybe be 40 centimetres long, at which point they need to be moved up a grade in cage. And it's a very slow process because they're not at maturity until about maybe 10 to 20 years old. Here we go. <laughs> they're jumping off these little ledges and, and hitting that water. They're up and their eyes are out. And this is the start of their new life. Listen to the calls. Even in here, they're still calling for mum. They know now this is their home, this is where they're going to live, and they're just checking that I'm still here. 
Now, you guys, don't pick on Harry, please. Hey, what, you want to stay with me? You want to stay with me, right? Don't you stay... There you go. See you guys. I'll bring you some food a bit later. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.